I am Keith Parnell. I am with Jace Group. We are a creative advertising and PR firm, and we're actually out of Mobile. Of course, we cover all the Hampton Roads and really all across the United States. Um, well, one of the things I want to make sure that you guys get out of this today is maybe to intrigue your mind to thinking of more creative ideas on doing your advertising or your brand exposure or your PR in the end, but we want to make sure that there's one underlying thought throughout this whole process that we're gonna talk about right now is that I want to make sure that you guys know and you guys understand how every dollar that you spend on advertising and marketing and PR, how we can measure that at the end and attribute it to actual sales or leads or whatever type of business you're in. There are ways now through the term you're gonna, we're gonna talk about here in a second through inbound marketing, there are ways now where you can measure almost down to the dollar um, how, how successful your advertising dollars are. Whether we're talking offline advertising or internet advertising, we're, we're gonna talk about both of those. So keep that one thought in mind as we go through here that almost, almost everything we do here is toward that end state, toward that goal of being able to measure our dollars that we spend. So it's not like back in the old days where we get our creative team involved and say, hey, we need a billboard. Okay, let's go throw up a billboard and six months later it gets reevaluated and we go talk to our creative director and he says, oh yeah, it's great. My buddies, my friend, friends love it. Well, how do we know that it was actually successful? Now, there's a little bit of vagueness to that because there's a difference between brand campaigns and lead generation campaigns. So some of that you have to write off as brand exposure and brand reinforcement but um, there are still ways even today through outdoor advertising that we can measure our expenditures at the end. So let's keep that in mind. Um, I wanna spend not five minutes, so just a couple of sentences, just so to understand who you guys are and what you do. Maybe tell me your name, the name of your company, and your role in your company, just so that I can kind of angle what we're talking about to make sure I can maybe curb some of the questions that you might have at the end. So maybe we'll start right here. Dennis Edwards, I'm the Director of Risk Management Services for Pro Concepts LLC, a small business in Virginia Beach. How we do risk management services, provide risk management services to clients, and, and have an application called Risk Radar Enterprises, which uh, we market and sell to uh, customers for risk management. Hi, I'm Nicole Duncan, I work for CI Corporation, and we offer software and service. I work in the marketing department and I do research, writing, customer service, technical troubleshooting, right. whatever else needs to be helped out. Very important. <laughs> <side. laughs> My name is Mark Rowland with Hackworth. I do marketing there and everything from um, building the website to making flyers and shoes. It's all in here. My name is David Kropansky, I'm a business banker at uh, Bank of America, um, and my dual purpose here, uh, I specialize in revenues up to $5 million to $10 million too. Uh, I'm also starting a small firm, private firm, uh, specializing in uh, you know, um, certain types of uh, liquidity and, and uh, asset-based financing, so uh, I'm just here, I really, really uh, enjoyed the first guest speaker on bringing and I'm looking forward to some marketing ideas um, as I launch this thing, so. Nice. My name is Jim Hodges. I'm with Pallet Heaton and Krulin. Uh, we're going through a branding period for the last few years. We used to be called Pallet Oil Company. 
As everyone knows, the oil is very high right now. We've lost a lot of business over the years. We've been in business since 1952, and we've been trying to change our brand to a heat and cooling side, which is right. hard to do. And you know, we've been successful for a, a small part of it, but we kind of got the stagnant. We're trying to come up with some ideas <coughs> so right. to turn it around. Okay. Hi, I'm Wayne Jones. I am. I'm the owner of Airland and Sea Heavy Equipment Services. We provide a full range of construction heavy equipment. We also handle fleet vehicles and all types of lifting apparatus up to 750 uh, tons. Uh, we sell, we <coughs> lease, and we also work in areas of consulting. Sometimes with uh, specificity on attachments, how I can take, you may already own a machine that can do one purpose, we look at that machine and we give you some attachments so now you can get four jobs out of that same piece of machinery. So that's, and I'm here to work on our brand. I just was mentioning someone that I have three different uh, symbols that I've acquired over 17 years of business. Right. And I want to try to move forward before we start launching t-shirts and right. we just lab started labeling some of our trucks, which was a requirement for the Navy. Right. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, you're following into the area right now, and I heard a couple of others right here where um, this falls in line with what Mark was talking about. Strategy is everything. Building that strategy and understanding, you know, understanding everything all the way down to your demographics. Your yeah, a letterhead is one At thing. The That's right. We right. got one for the letterhead, one for the website, right. one for the business card. That's right. three different looks. Yeah, we're going to talk some more about strategies here in a second, but that is a very important point that. Not always that small business owners can be afford to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, um, it's kind of well worth it. You can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cameron Muro. I'm with Jace Group. I'm the digital brand manager. So I'm in charge of uh, different facets of the company, but mostly brand management for our sales and our clients. So I'm here to back up Keith. <laughs> Um, we'll start here in just a second, but you got to speak up. If you have, have questions as we're going through here, even if it's something that ties into what you see, what Mark was already talking about, don't feel like you have to save them for the end. We can make this a full discussion here. So I want to make sure that you guys um, have gotten what you need out of the end of the conversation. At the end of the conversation. So make sure and speak up. One of, one of the, the ways we look at tying in inbound marketing. Now remember, inbound marketing is not just about the internet. Um, there have been, inbound marketing has kind of become a hot buzzword of the past few years. There's a few companies that have popped up on the internet. Um, but I want to derail you from the thoughts you might have had about inbound marketing in a way that don't just think about the internet. Um, you'll see some of these entry points around um, a controlled aspect of your, of your marketing program a lot of these are internet based, but some of them are not. Um, really, it's not shown on, on the screen here, but it should be about 50-50 your um, offline advertising versus your, your online advertising. Um, budgets will determine a lot of that with small business. Not everyone can afford to set up outdoor boards. Not everyone can afford television commercials. Not everyone can afford radio commercials. But keep in mind that as we're going, and we're talking about inbound marketing, we're talking about both here. So make that assumption, we're talking about internet marketing and outbound marketing, traditional advertising and marketing. But the one thing that we've got to keep in mind under this model that everything we do has always must point back to a central location and a controlled location. Um, one of the mistakes that happens a lot of times with small businesses is, as Mark ended his presentation with, oh, I have a Facebook page, I'm good. Everyone can find me on Facebook. Well, there are many technical reasons why that's not uh, a good practice. One, Facebook and everything and anything on Facebook doesn't always get out to the search engines. Everyone can't get to Facebook. We all know there's a demographic that doesn't want to have anything to do with Facebook. There's a 40-ish, 45-ish and older crowd that are still decision makers in the business world that don't want to have anything to do with Facebook. So keep that in mind. We must have this website and or a blog. We always recommend blog because of content management. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But everything you do should point back to your website and blog. Why? Because you can control every bit of communication that's on your website and, and your blog. You can control what's pushed out and you can control the conversations that are going on on your website and blog. Now how do you do that? We're gonna talk about that in a second and how we tie everything back. 
there are a few points that we have to keep in mind. I'm going to run through these real quick. Quality content on your website and your blog and on your entities, your Facebook page, your Twitter uh, timeline, that kind of thing. Even your advertising, your billboards and radio spots. Inbound links coming back into your website are very important. If Google and Yahoo and Bing are important to you and your business, having folks find you on the internet, on their smartphones. I actually left mine back there. I'm feeling kind of weird. I don't have it with me. But that brings the, to my point here how important your website and the information on your website is. And Google and Yahoo and Bing place credit to your website the more inbound links are, part, are pointed back to your website. How many partners are linked back to your website? How many links from Facebook are pointing back to your website? How many links from social bookmarking websites like Dig and Reddit and Delicious, those kinds, are pointing to your website? So it's one of those criteria that the search engines use to figure out if your website and your blog is really important out there on the internet. So those inbound links coming back in are almost as important as quality content that's on your website. Social signals is a term that's come up in the last, what, eight, nine months maybe, and Google Plus has made this really hot. Bing has hopped on the bandwagon, um, and social signals is all about who's talking about you on the internet. The search engines, the spiders, have become very smart on figuring out that, oh, that's you over there on Facebook, so let's associate that conversation with your website that's over here on, on your end of the internet. So social signals, it's all about the conversation that other people are having about your product or your service line or your business or your organization. That's very important in that we need to, as much as possible, control those conversations. If there are negative comments, if you own a restaurant or a coffee shop and someone visits your shop and has a bad experience and they go on Yelp, yelp.com, a, a review um, directory, and they put something bad about you or on your Facebook page, that kind of thing, you need to kind of control that conversation. You can't have that conversation deleted, but address it on the internet. It's very important to control that negative conversation. So that's what we call social signals. And then the big term over the past few years, search engine optimization. Well, the term and the way we used to handle search engine optimization, SEO, has kind of gone by the wayside. Not gone by the wayside as in gone away, it's just one of the elements now and one of the practices that we must assume is done properly. You can't just go out anymore and say, oh, I'm going to do SEO, and all of a sudden you're successful. Because the other 5 million people out there in your vertical are doing the same thing. So we can't make critical mistakes in SEO and search engine optimization, but it's not the baby anymore. It's not very rarely now that we get clients coming to us and say, hey, we need an SEO firm. That just doesn't happen anymore because it's just part of the tool set now. It's making sure things are done properly on your website and your blog. Smart web development, that gets a little techy. Um, we have, I'm sure several of you get involved in HTML a little bit on your website, but using the right technologies, using the right formatting, that, that type of thing, adding alt tags, title tags, those kind of things. It's not something that as a business owner, you probably need to know about, but you need to know that you're working with a reputable, reputable web company that's doing things properly and not getting penalized on the web. That's the big thing. And then strategic landing pages. We're gonna talk about landing pages in a second because that's very critical to us being able to measure all of our ad spending that we're doing um, on the internet and, and beyond. And then we talked about brand a few minutes ago. Um, we're gonna assign roles to these eventually. You're gonna see here in, in some of the slides and different folks handle these strategies, different folks handle these strategies, and different folks handle this type of, of I guess work throughout the day and, and, and these aspects are very important to them. Brand monitoring, analytics research um, and measurement, ROI calculations, we talked a tad bit about that but we're gonna talk some more. Being able to measure what works and what doesn't work. And then re-engagement planning, what works and what I shouldn't spend my money on anymore but this worked over here so I'm gonna move more dollars over here. So how do we figure that out? We're gonna talk about that here in a second. Well this is where we start. I actually did this on purpose um, to get out of the canned internet feel. This is a direct mailer. We all receive direct mailers in the mail all the time. I'm going to use one of our clients. We are the advertising agency for Dragas companies. 
Um, there are condominium development developer around in this area in on South Side. Um, so we do their advertising and they don't mind us showing some of the, the techniques that we've used for them. So you're going to see their name flow through quite a few of, of these slides. Well, we develop an, uh, an ad campaign. Um, there's there are many steps to an ad campaign, understanding your market audience, uh, understanding what mediums work, as in would direct mailers work, would email newsletters work, would television work, that type of thing per ad campaign. So this is a campaign we did um, last February, this past February, for Valentine's Day. They had specials running in their community, so they wanted to get it out to their audience, so we developed this advertising campaign. And on these advertising campaigns oops, are landing pages. And there are special URLs, like this one right here, it's hard to read. I believe it's uh, dragus.com slash hearts. So when you get this direct mailer in the mail, I should have brought a couple of them with me, but I didn't. Um, when you get these direct mailers in the mail, there's a phone number actually on the direct mailer, but more prominent on these mailers is a landing page URL. And there are also, yep, on this one too, there are also QR codes that can be snapped with smartphones. And what they do is take the user landing page to a special page on the website. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. And the special page on the website is similar to the rest of their website, but you'll notice there's no navigation. You can't get out to the rest of the website if, except for clicking the logo. And it talks specifically to this audience. It's not in general terms. It's not just, hey, here we are. This is what we're about. Go look at all of our communities. This is actually a conversation talking to these folks and the key here is showing that there's a lead generation web form on this landing page. And it's very welcoming, it's very inviting. Again, it talks to this audience who you targeted in your ad campaign. So why do we do that? To kind of help ensure and to encourage more leads coming in that we can pass off to our sales team and to ensure that this conversation flow all the way through is the same. The worst thing you'd want to do is have someone come back and tell you, oh, I received your direct mailer, but then I went to get more information about what I wanted to hear about, and you didn't even talk about it, so I just left. I just went away. That's the last thing you want to hear. So we want to make sure that these landing pages are uh, directly targeted toward the target audience in our campaign. So we figure we've been working with, with Dragus for almost three years, about two and a half years, and we've created, created probably 100 to 150 landing pages for them. Now when you go to drags.com, you won't see any of these landing pages. It's not, in, it's not in the navigation, in the about us, or in our community sections, because again, it's only for a campaign. So they're sitting back there, you just can't tell they're back there if you just swim off to the website and go to drags.com looking around. Like again, they're specifically for that audience. So these landing pages get developed all the time. And I'll make another point right here. When we do ad campaigns, there may be multiple mediums that we advertise to. We may put out a direct mailer. We may advertise in the Virginia Pilot with an ad, an ad that looks the same. Um, we may do a radio spot around the same campaign. But all of those have their own unique landing page. The direct mailer may have dragus.com hearts written on it. The Virginia Pilot ad may have dragus.com Valentine's Day, something like that. And it goes to another landing page, looks just like this because it's talking to that audience. But we're able to measure how many hits came to that landing page. And we know that it either came from the direct mailer, or it came from the radio spot, <coughs> or it came from the Virginia pilot that had that kind of thing. So we have measurements on our landing page. We can tell. See where I'm getting at here? We can tell all the way through on the flow. We can tell all the way through on the flow what's working and what's not actually working. So here we're talking marketing conversion rates. We're going to talk a couple different rates here. Marketing conversion rate for your marketing department and a sales conversion rate, which we can figure out common sense. That's for your sales um, department or your sales folks. <coughs> so it's pretty simple, but we're going to see here in a second how important these conversion rates are, the marketing conversion rates, how many folks hit this landing page. And we know they all came from these, from, in this case, the direct mailer. It's not people just swimming around on the web. We all know that they got our mailer and came here divided by how many folks actually filled out that web form. So what does that tell us? It tells us a few things. If someone came to this landing page from this ad, they're definitely interested. 
They're not people just surfing around for information. They are definitely interested in what you had to say in your advertisement. So they came here and they filled it out. So we know that these 500 views on this landing page are actual people that are interested in our product or our company or our service. So then by how many web form leads, if this right here, it gets down below probably six, seven, eight percent, we know we have a problem with our landing page. Either the web form's not in a prominent enough spot or we didn't make our copy or our photography intriguing enough to actually, so that someone would actually fill out the form. Because again, we're making that assumption, they're already interested, so we did something wrong in this landing page. So we've gotta go back to creative and with numbers, <laughs> with actual statistics and say, hey, we got the bulk coming in here, but they're not filling out the landing page, so we need to revisit that. There we go. And then our sales team. So our leads, folks filled out the form, fill out this web form, and our leads get filtered down to the sales team. And the sales team, this is where they care about sales conversion rates. How many leads actually got here, how many people filled out the web form, and how many closes we made on the sales, on, on the leads that came down through the sales. Now, if there's a problem there, then we're probably saying there's something wrong, again, with the sales process. Either the sales folks are not following up fast enough, or there's something wrong in the, really there's not a sales pitch there because the sales pitch has already been handled. Um, there's a problem in the process somewhere, or maybe there's a problem with our service or our product, so that needs to get visited there too. And we figure out here, again, what's working and what's not. So already, we've only talked about half the process, and we can already tell that if we have a bad ad campaign, and think two years ago, before this process was around, we just know we had a bad ad campaign. Let's don't do it again. Well, now we're able to actually figure out where the campaign went back. Maybe knocking the money off of this ad, these ad campaigns is not the right way to go. We're just having a problem down here in the sales closing process. Um, I'll mention this too. Um, where am I pointing to? Maybe that's what. Yeah. Sure. Um, yes, it's very high. Um, it, it depends again on the medium. It depends on which advertising medium you use. Um, in their in their business, because let's say direct let's take direct mailers, because their direct mailers are targeted for geographic areas that we know for sure are their target audience for a specific community. Like with these guys especially, they have two live communities right now. So we know there are certain zip codes of folks that are gonna be buying either young professionals buying into the condominium community or downsizers, folks retiring, selling their homes and coming in. If we advertise it right, the, the intrigue rate is actually what we call it, the intrigue rate is pretty high. So that goes back to the strategies we were talking about earlier, identifying your target, your target audience um, in the 20 to 30% range. Yeah, it's pretty high, but that comes over time. You know, looking at numbers as you go through and figuring out, oh, I shouldn't be advertising over there, but I should be advertising here. And, you know, too, like this was a generic, this here, this was a generic Valentine's campaign. So it went out to all of Hampton Roads, even to the peninsula. So its a success rate wasn't as high, um, this one in particular, um, but it was still well worth their money to do it because, you know, you figure selling condominiums, they're, their sales and commissions and profitability is a lot higher than if you were a janitorial service firm and getting a new contract. So um, they're, they're figuring their return and bouncing that against the expenditures on the ad campaign is a little bit easier for them yeah. because their market, not the market, their price of their product is so high. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that, that may be back, you know, you'd have to measure and figure out exactly where, but it may be all the way back to strategy. Make sure you're advertising to the right audience. And it may even be that, depending on the type of business you're in, um, going back to a person that can do focus groups for you and figure out, you know, maybe I think this is my the right audience, but over time, they're not actually buying. Or the economy's tough on that business, but they're not tough on this business. Maybe I can angle my advertising toward these guys. You know, so there's a difference there whether you're talking B2C or B2B also, so you have to, that um, while we're talking about this, 
I'll let you guys know, we have a tool that we provide to our clients. It's called Jace Marketing Manager, JMM. And this tool tracks campaigns and leads and the actual sales process and auto assigns um, to a, these leads that come into a team of sales reps. And it's like built in, it ties into a CRM that you know almost all of us run customer relationship management tools of some type in our business. So the, this lead generation system um, and sales um, reporting system ties into any CRM system we actually have one for our clients too. But this tracking process is not something that's done on spreadsheets. There are real-time reports every day. A manager can come in and look at the report on my ad campaign expenditures. Every day I can look to see how many people filled out the landing form assigned to every ad campaign. And every day I can see what the, the progress is on every lead that comes through those ad campaigns. Sometimes it's information overload, but depending on the manager and the level, whether you're a manager of a department or a director level or a vice president level or CEO level, you'll want to see different types of reports so you can see those in that, in that tool set. Awesome. That was the that was hitting the landing page, right? Okay, we'll keep checking. Um, so we threw up some potential roles, and you got to figure a good sized company that's going to have all these departments too. It's not relative to everyone that's in here being a small business, but I wanted to kind of show these roles that were kind of in charge of these processes, especially in the old days and how segregated this was. Like, this was the martini crowd over here. We created our, we came up with our campaigns and threw out our billboards and they went off happy for six months and everything was good. In the old days, we've all seen men and men. That's not a lie. We used to live in that type of world. It's not always true now, but it is kind of. These guys are kind of fun, right, Mark? The creative side is kind of fun, but it used to be more segregated than it is because a creative director never had insight to what was actually working and what wasn't working. So when the campaign was out in execution, the creative director not being involved in the process had no thinking going on. He couldn't see, he or she couldn't see what was going on. And in the meantime, when next month's meeting came back around, this creative director didn't have as many ideas on how they could solve those issues that were going on down the pipe because they didn't know what all the issues were going down the pipe. Now they do. Now this creative director has insight to all that information in that tool set that we were talking about. So the marketing director oversees this marketing conversion rate, and the sales manager oversees that sales conversion rate. And here they are again, I kind of jumped ahead. The marketing conversion rate and sales conversion rate, very, very important. And then, usually, at some point, whether it's a vice president or a CEO or whomever, there's someone in the company that cares about everything. They care about the budget at the beginning, they care about the returns at the end, and they care about manpower expenditures all the way through here. So usually there's a person that's sitting up here over top that cares about everything and the overall ad spending and how we can match that overall ad spending per closed sale. So again, just to reiterate, Usually the sales manager or folks on the sales team, all they cared about was making their money and closing those conversion rates. Where if there was feedback to come back up the line, it usually just came back in an email blast that nobody really took very well because it was very um, mean spirited, that type of thing. And nobody, there was no feedback going on across the team. Now there is, and we have, it makes this person's job, whether it's the vice president or CEO, a little bit better because they know that there's conversation going on across the board. I'll say here also, there's a comment to be made that Mark was seeing earlier um, about the branding process. This process itself will form to any size organization, whether there's one person handling sales, or whether it's 10 sales folks, or whether the owner of the company is doing the marketing, it doesn't matter. This process still works all the way through and you still have the real-time reporting, which is very important. The real-time reporting on dollars that are spent all the way through the process. So, what type of ad mediums, you guys have heard me talk about ad mediums, the places where 
ad campaigns actually get out to the public and out to our target audience. Where, what are, what are our exposure points? Well, when we're talking the internet side, content marketing, writing content on the internet, online press releases um, that your PR department may do or your PR agency may do, um, content on your blog that's relative to the service that you provide, um, photos that go out to Flickr, videos that go out to YouTube. Content marketing is very important because it helps get exposure out and the, the more information you get out on the internet about you and your company, um, the more important you are to Google and Yahoo and Bing. Social signals, we talked a tad bit about that, who's talking about you and who's not. SEO, pay-per-click, paid advertising. Um, I think we're gonna spend a second talking about paid advertising. Um, paid advertising, like buying ads on Google and Bing, um, and even on YouTube, are a very effective way to quickly get in the game. Sometimes when you're just standing up a new website or you're rebranding, um, I think a couple of you guys talked about rebranding. Um, when you're rebranding, it takes time. It takes time because first of all, you need to have the ad dollars to get out and spend. And the second thing is, when you're talking the internet, it takes a long time for Google and Yahoo to come back and re-spider the information on your websites, to change information, if you're changing the, the way you want your company to be perceived. It takes time. And sometimes it takes up to four or five months for them to actually re-spider your website if, if your, your website and your blog hasn't been real active. Well, a quick way into the game is pay-per-click advertising, buying those ads on um, Google and Bing about a service or about a new product or about a rebranding with the new terminology and the new technologies you're providing. And again, pointing to specific landing pages. Because you figure, you go into Google and you see the ads up at the top and the ads on the right. Those are not just arbitrary words. They're targeted keywords about a topic or about that fit into an ad campaign. And then they go to a landing page that talks about exactly what this person clicked on to get over to your website from the pay-per-click ads. Yes. Question. Um, with everything now being available on the internet, um, people are trying to get to information a lot quicker. How much longer do you think that paper advertising is going to last? For instance, your ads in your newspapers. I mean, even though we're economic development, right. we, we used to do ads in what we call location uh, magazines. Right. But we were finding that they're trying to track their ROI, you know, uh, finding out who was actually seeing our ad, right. was it worth it? Right. I mean, because our whole purpose is to promote Chesapeake to grow right. business. So we were finding that we were sure. spending a lot of money on advertising yes. and placing ads in newspapers. And right. even as we tried to target our industry based mm -hmm. on our targeted industry list, mm -hmm. and we're finding that we were spending a lot of money placing ads. So we said, okay, we're not doing that anymore. Right. And so right. I think that's hurt the advertising agencies who actually depend on that money to not yes. place those ads. So right. now with this, you see that this is growing yes. in such a way. Yeah, that we have. We have in that it's help us, helped us um, eliminate the myth that newspaper advertising is gone or is on the way out. In some verticals it is. It depends. It depends on your target audience. Urban Outfitters is moving into downtown Norfolk. I doubt very seriously Urban Outfitters is buying an ad in Virginia Pilot just because of their target audience. Their target audience is, is probably mobile users, um, YouTube, um, photos, Facebook, Twitter crowd, that type of crowd. Um, but there are many industries, and I've heard quite a few of you guys um, mention your company, where newspaper advertising could still be big for you. And the way to figure out if it is or not is through these landing pages we're talking about. Your ad goes to a specific landing page. Click here to get more information. Click here to receive a special or whatever deals you have going on or more information about Chesapeake Economic Develop Development Go to this landing page. It serves a couple of purposes that we talked about. First, it gives them value for putting down their newspaper and either snapping the QR code off of the ad or actually typing the URL into their laptop on their desk or on their, their dining room table. Don't tell your wives and husbands I said that. But um, going to that webpage, it gives them value because there's more information there. And the second thing is for you, it gives you measurement on is it really working? 
is, 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 are those ads that I'm taking out in, in the Virginia Pilot or in the Charlotte newspaper or Charlottesville newspaper or, where, or Washington DC and the Washington Times or Washington Post, um, is it working or are pay-per-click ads working? You have measurements because they all go to their own landing page and we can look to see what's working and what's even, not working. Even magazines and newspapers now on the internet. So yes. you actually do that. So, exactly. you know, it's the cost. Just, right. I guess the difference in doing your ad, you know, from there to, to bringing it across the internet. So that was just kind of con my question right. basically is, will right. that go away or is there still a need for the yeah. paper advertisement? And yeah. if so, who's the target audience? Yeah, the target audience are, there's definitely a demographic set there because generally the older folks are reading the newspaper where the younger folks are not. And the younger folks are still getting their information on the internet but from the newspaper company, HamptonRose.com, right. is Virginia Pilot. Right. So same ads, when you go and talk to the pilot and you start doing media buys, we do media buys a lot for our clients when you go, usually they package all that in together. There's banner ads on HamptonRose.com, there are ads on HamptonRose.com, and they package that in with the newspaper ad. So now what you've done, we have a campaign going on. Okay, I want to figure out what's going to work for that campaign. I go to Virginia Pilot, or I go to any, I'm just picking them out of the air, and say, what can you guys help me do? Well, I want to figure out if this audience is offline or online. And they're going to give you prices, and they're going to go back and forth with that. And then you have separate landing pages for each one of them, for your banner ad on HamptonRose.com, for the ad on HamptonRose.com in a specific section of HamptonRose.com, whether it's the business section or the real estate section or the sports section, all goes to a different landing page. And then your ad in your newspaper goes to its own landing page. It's a different URL, easily right. rememberable, right. that kind of thing. And then you're seeing every day, you're going in and looking at your reports every day. Wow, that worked today. Wow, it worked on Monday because my newspaper ad came out on Saturday and everyone got back to the office on Monday morning and they were getting the information they need, that kind of thing. So you start seeing those kind of numbers. And with, there are many tool sets like ours out there, so I'm not just plugging for ours, but with ours being that it matches to when the ads run and numbers on those landing pages, you can actually tell what works and what doesn't work. And since you're seeing numbers real time, we're gonna talk about it here in a second, re-engagement planning. Almost monthly, you can change your ad spend. Oh wow, newspapers aren't working. I don't have to wait till the end of a six month deal with the Virginia Pilot. Let's take that down. I'm spending that money over here online because I'm running a different deal. I'm running a different special. So almost monthly, you can change where your ad spending is going on. So you don't have to depend on what you read or what some yo-yo on the internet writes and says newspapers are on the way out. Oh my gosh. Well, it's not for every business. So you got to figure out what's right for you and what's working for you. And who your target audience is. Exactly. Exactly. So with this system, there are no more blanket statements on what works and what doesn't work. You actually figure out what works and doesn't work. I'd like to uh, just get your take on, uh, obviously, because this is what you do, um, with regards to uh, Facebook. There's no denying that Facebook gives you a high level of exposure. Right. Um, and we talked about pay-per-click. So right. your experience with, with regards to pay-per-click mm -hmm. uh, with Google and some of the other ones, as opposed to Facebook's pay-per-click right. program, because right. for me, it's hard to think when I'm thinking about small business or even just business in general, how many likes you got uh, quantifies or how you turn that into how you monetize that. Right. How do you how do you how do you have how many likes do I need to get to get some how, how many dollars versus how much I'm spending on Facebook as opposed to just having a website right. that I route people to to right. you know, communicate uh, as opposed to paying per click for like Google and stuff like that. What right. do you think on that? I think you, and, and we do a lot for, even for us, for our company, and I'll use us as an example. We do this a lot, we do a lot of testing with Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn especially, because um, for the most part our company is B2B, so we're, you know, our target audience are, are companies of all different sizes. So LinkedIn, getting our information on LinkedIn and, and ads on LinkedIn are pretty important to us. Um, you know, if you're, PDC, then of course Facebook ads or Facebook communication is a whole lot more important. Like you said, just because of the masses of people that are on Facebook. Now, numbers of likes, let's come back to that in a second and say that it's more important whether you have 10 likes on your Facebook page or you have 10,000 likes on your Facebook page about the message that you put on there. So we talked about your blog and your website and the information that goes on there 
there's there are systems also, and we have a system for our clients where when we publish information to our blog, it automatically gets to our Facebook page, our Twitter page, and our Google Plus page, and our LinkedIn page. So it all gets there automatically. And because it sends ex excerpts of those articles on our blog along with an attractive photo, the links to get more information come back to our website. And there, when they come back to the article on our blog, we can check how many hits were on that article. We treat it like a landing page. How many hits were on that article and where they came from. How many refers from Facebook? How many refers from Twitter? How many refers from LinkedIn? And we can tell, is Facebook working for us? Or is LinkedIn working for us? Or are neither of them working for us? Wow. So you can kind of treat them the same way. Um, a lot of people come to us, and, and over the years, I've known Bill Boyer for years now, and when we first started talking to each other and meeting in meetings and stuff, he's like, man, you guys are all over Facebook. I'm like, really, we're not because a lot of it's automated to get out there. Now we monitor the conversations. When conversations are going on, there are folks on our team, Cameron gets into it a lot, into those conversations and monitoring those, but because our information that we publish to the internet gets to a whole lot of places, you have more exposure. So I think that process might work a little better, but you can't do it and just say it's automated and it's taken care of. You still have to take the time to monitor those conversations. Um, there are still some folks on Facebook, since you brought that um, social community up, there are still some folks, especially consumer side, not businesses, consumers, that just want to be on Facebook. So they're going to put a comment on your article information, and they're not even going to go to click and get more information on your website. So that's why you still have to monitor those conversations. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Everybody else good? Okay, and then what we're changing here is to our offline side. Telemarketing, don't let it scare you. It still works, we're in political season. All of us are getting those crazy phone calls that we ate. Um, how are we doing? Okay. We all, we're all getting those phone calls. It works for some industries. There's not many times where we recommend doing Autobot phone calls or getting in touch with a call center to start doing surveys for us. But there are times when it happens um, where it works. Um, TV commercials, radio spots, trade shows are still big, depends on your industry. Especially if you're in the tech industry, trade shows are still huge. So that's a way of outbound marketing. Um, we have one of our folks that um, is one of our content management associates, our content marketing associates, that writes a lot of content for us. And she came from a company um, where she ran trade shows for her company. So she writes that kind of thing a lot. And how the inbound marketing process can tie into trade shows your flyers that you hand out, your business cards for a, a, a specific trade show has a landing page URL on it. How to get more information. It's the easiest thing to do in a trade show is to hand out flyers by the folks that are standing there so that someone else can go back to their office and they pull all those out and they go and look at this landing page that talks to them at that trade show. Um, conversion rates on that, we talked about conversion rates. Conversion rates on that kind of thing seem to be very high. Because if someone's going to take the time to go to all those booths and the trade show, first of all, they're probably interested, or they just want the free stuff. But if they're looking at it on Monday when they get back to the office, um, by the time they get to your landing page, they're very, very interested. And we have to take into account that we might not like it, especially if you're a salesperson from back in the day. People today like communicating better electronically than they do picking up the phone. Yes. Now, there are studies that show if you're a salesperson and you're doing cold calls that you will have a pretty good success rate because you're catching people and you have their direct attention. But if you look at numbers now and the overall process of sending out emails or flyers coming back in or filling out a web form, you get a better response from folks psychologically and catching them on the phone. Plus, as business owners, marketing directors, vice presidents that handle budgets, this is a whole lot less expensive than paying a person to man call center all day or doing cold calls. Or if you're uh, in the type of business that you're in, electronic communications always tons less expensive than um, in-person conversations. Now, don't Take away that, oh my God, that guy said we shouldn't have people doing cold calls because there's nothing better than um, voice referrals 
friend referrals, and there's nothing better than talking to a person face to face. So we can't let it replace when somebody's trying to get in touch with us, pick up the phone and talk to them, because there are just some people that don't want to communicate electronically. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying as mass numbers, um, electronic communication done effectively is just a lot less expensive. Do you have a percentage rate of what that might be from electronic? That, that's hard, and it, it depends on the vertical. It depends on the type of business that you're in. If, you're, if your industry is larger corporations, it's usually very successful to trigger the conversation that way, and then it gets closed out with phone calls or face-to-face -face meeting or Skype meetings or, or that kind of thing. So it depends on a lot of factors. So no, not really. I mean, we can pull out some numbers from some of the clients that we work with, and it seems to be a very successful way of doing it for them, especially when you factor in the dollars. Um, but that's just because of their verticals, just because of their industries. Um, Print advertising, we've talked a lot about print advertising already, and outdoor boards. I think I'm gonna show you an example of an outdoor board here in a second. And let's move to the last piece of our uh, chart that we showed earlier. And really to me, as a company owner, and to a lot of you guys that manage budgets and are in charge of budgets and that kind of thing, this is a very important piece. The four sections of this, brand monitoring, analytics research, and analysis, ROI calculations, and re-engagement planning. Brand monitoring, there are ways now on the internet where you can go and set up search terms. Maybe it's your company name, maybe it's your CEO's name, maybe it's the name of your product or name of a service. And you can go and enter those names into a system and you'll get an automated email every time that name is mentioned on the internet, anywhere. If Google spiders it or Bing spiders it, they'll let you know if you're mentioned out there on the internet. So it's a kind of a good way to start generating conversation out on the internet and figure out what people are talking about. Google Alerts is one of the bigger ones that I know of right now, alerts.google.com. And you just, everybody has a Gmail account. You just go log in and put in your search terms and you can tell it, notify me in real time if you have a hot topic that's going on where you're trying to generate traffic, or you can tell it the, I think it's daily, weekly, and monthly, you can get reports based on that. So Overview, but brand monitoring on the internet is very important, especially for reputation management. You want to know if you're in any kind of business if folks are talking bad about you or your product out on the internet. This is a great way to figure it out for no effort. The effort is five minutes of setting up the account, and that's it. And then it's just automatic email that comes to you to let you know. Analytics research. Um, analytics as in page hits, where people are coming from, what are they typing into the search engines to find you, are they com where are they coming from for my landing page, hitting my landing pages, um, pay-per-click ads or Facebook conversations or that kind of thing. ROI calculations, we talked about um, figuring out where our dollars are working and where they're not, applying dollars that we spend on our ad campaigns and our marketing, um, and we can assign those dollars per lead and we figure out how much a lead costs in our business and in our industry. And there are even re published reports, uh, Wall Street Journal does a great job of publishing reports like this where you can figure out, are you in the industry average or are you not, um, on how many dollars you're spending per lead, and even broken down all the way down to per sale. So when you see those numbers in the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or the LA Times, you can run into your tool set and say, hey, this is what, this is what my numbers were last month, or this is what my numbers were last quarter, or what they were last spring or fall or last holiday season, so you can prepare for the upcoming holiday season. You, don't, you no longer have to take into account what the Wall Street Journal says. I actually know now what it is in my business, in my vertical, in, in my metropolitan area. And then I think what's the most important piece of this is re-engagement planning. Based on those reports and what's working and what's not working, I can change my dollars right now. I can get my reports at the end of the month and say pay-per-click work, newspaper advertising didn't. Next month, I'm moving 75% of my dollars off of newspaper advertising and moving it to pay-per-click. Or I'm assigning it more to my content management folks and having them write more content, put out more press releases on the internet or press releases to the media core. Um, or writing more content for our blog because we're getting a lot of conversations going on on our blog. So this is where re-engagement planning comes in. You can actually tell the dollars that are spent and what's working and what's not, to move them around. I'll run through these real fast because we've talked about a lot of this already. I talked about the term SEO. It's not a huge term anymore. It's there. 
but it's just part of the tool set. It's just one of the techniques now. It's not, oh, I need an SEO company to come in. But we talked about most of these content marketing, articles, press releases, inbound links coming back into your website, very important. Google Plus, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. If you're in that type of industry, if you're in the retail industry or a coffee shop or a gift shop or that kind of thing, Pinterest is very, um, is very important to you because it's a way to, for other folks to share your information and maybe photos about your company. And then we talked about SEO. Paid search, so we're gonna to come to it for a second, but really we've already talked about it. When you do paid search, this was the main point I want you to know. When you sign up for Google AdWords, you're actually, your ads are actually going out to search partners also. AOL.com, don't discount them, they're still huge. I don't know why, but AOL.com is still huge. Same with MySpace. MySpace is still huge in the music industry. It's still out there. So when you sign up with Google, they put your ads on these websites also. So you can target them based on which ads if you want to go out to those communities. And Bing also goes to Yahoo. There are Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, and Twitter ads. Um, the LinkedIn ads, if you, especially if you're a B2B business and the professional um, client is your target audience, LinkedIn is a great place to get out and meet people and get your message out because it's the right audience. Demographics, we don't haven't really talked about marketing one-on-one, but we all know about demographic, identifying your target audience, that kind of thing. Well, there's a news term out now. It's not new anymore. So you're too old now. Social graphics. Demographics on the internet. Where, identifying your target audience, where they're hanging out, who they trust on the internet. So when you're talking internet advertising, you're not always targeting the decision maker. Maybe you're targeting the consultant to the decision maker. So you have to know who they are. You have to know who's in the decision maker's ear um, out on the internet. And you know it may be just something that, that comes up in a casual conversation with a consultant and a vice president. And that consultant, since you targeted them out on the internet, they actually know what's going on and that kind of thing. So you may not always be targeting that vice president. And of course, you trust your customers online. The last point here, and the next slide is going to talk about this. We're, we're almost done here. Don't fo focus on the tools and technologies. This is especially on the internet. It's a little bit offline because we talked about maybe newspapers might be going away. It's definitely slowed down a lot. Um, but if your strategies are right, if your ad campaigns are done properly, the tools, the technologies are not important. If Twitter goes away tomorrow and you're spending $400 a day on Twitter advertising, which is not unheard of, and Twitter goes away today, and you only planned your ad campaign for that platform, you're in oh my god stage because you do, you're spending all those dollars on on Twitter or on or on Facebook or on uh, the newspaper and all of a sudden the Virginia Pilot cut back to three days a week like what was the New Orleans Picayune or whatever wants to cut back to delivery three days a week but if your ad campaign your strategy is done properly that it's a it's a great concept at your target audience where it gets advertised is not as important as your strategy. So remember that. Don't focus on the tools and technologies. Focus on your strategy, and you'll be a lot safer in the end. Um, this is an example of one of the outdoor boards that I was talking about. We did. Sometimes we get naysayers that say when you're doing traditional advertising, folks are not going to type in a URL on their laptop. It's just not. Just give me a phone number. Well, we find that not always to be successful. This is an ad. It's hard to tell with this that we did for um, a new community for Dragus, and this is a banner in the center court at Chesapeake Square Mall. It's in the big center court area, so it's up in the overhead up there. And you can see at the bottom, it has a landing page on it. Back to success, very, very successful. Um, the dollars that we spent through that media buy with them was very successful, and we know that because of the landing page that was on this head. And one more example, we kind of already talked about print and advertising, this was another flyer that we did, I think this was, it was two years ago, um, on Valentine's Day, again, funny, I threw up Valentine's Day one, you'll notice there's no QR code. Everybody know what the QR codes are? Little scanners and mm -hmm. smartphones? Well, two years ago, we weren't doing QR codes. Right, okay. And now we figure out that they actually are successful. <coughs> um, so we do them on almost all of our print materials now. Can I tell you, um, 
five seconds of what we are. We are this complete team. And you remember I was talking earlier about the creative director now has insight to everything down the road. Um, at least once every three days, almost, most times almost every day, this team talks to each other. But I was gonna say almost all day. It is literally almost all day. So our creative director now has insight to the reports that the accounting team spits out in the same opposite. Our web developers have insight to what the marketing team has going on because of those numbers. If there are, is no communication going on, then we're gonna go back to the way we were 20 years ago in advertising. Just, oh my gosh, creative director thinks it's a great idea, so we should do it. Can't do that anymore, not in this economy. We have to know that our dollars that we're spending are working. And that's it. Um, we're gonna have, there's a URL here. We're gonna have the slides up. Um, we'll have some video. Depending on how the video comes out, we were talking about that earlier. So if you guys need to go back and look at anything. Contact information, my business cards, there's a stack of them right here at the end. If we'll make sure everybody gets one. If you have questions about anything, feel free, email me. Um, I'm sure same way with Mark. Uh, we take questions all the time. So don't feel like if you're picking up the phone and calling us or emailing us that we're gonna give you the sales pitch. And today in 2012, that's not the way we are. We just get out and talk about our business. So if you have questions about anything, feel free to forward them on. If you need advice, we need free consulting all the time. So if you need advice, um, please feel free to give us a call. Shoot us an email. Any questions for either one of us? Yeah, that is. It's, it's a different size, a different look. Cool. Well, thank you, Angie, for hosting us and inviting us here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is your slide still the I'm about to pass out okay? just a yeah. short survey. If you guys can just take a moment to complete it and uh, let us know how you answer this. day or so, we'll put it up and you go back and look at the whole slideshow. Um, you say right there, there.